two months ago during the SpaceX company All Hands, it would appear that nothing could be going better than things have been going for SpaceX recently. And indeed, all the evidence seemed to point to that. The booster turnaround and performance for Falcon 9 has been simply incredible. This rocket has not experienced any sort of significant problem since 2016. So really, everything has been going very well for Crew Dragon, for Cargo Dragon, for everything that Falcon 9 has been deploying, especially Starlink. Starlink has been going up at a dizzying pace. It would seem every time you turn around, there's a Starlink launch. But on the other side of the coin, not all of the performance has been rosy for Starlink. They need Starlink version 2. And that's what Starship is supposed to be accomplishing, is large-scale deployment of the much bigger version 2 Starlink satellites. And Elon Musk actually made it very clear a few months ago that Starship would be the only vehicle that could possibly deploy Starlink version 2. And without Starship and without Starlink version 2, the possibility of SpaceX going bankrupt was a real thing and something that needed to be considered. I made videos about both of these topics, about Starship being the only vessel to deploy Starlink V2 and the possibility of SpaceX going bankrupt and how far we have come since the launch of SN15. When I witnessed this vehicle take off, I was overcome with enthusiasm. I watched the launch with a kid who happened to be wandering around in front of my camera lens and instead I asked him if he wanted to watch the launch with me and he did and both of us were crazy excited for the launch and especially for the successful landing and even though SN15 had a very uh, troubling shall we say fire breakout upon landing actually before it even landed that definitely put the vehicle at risk nevertheless it did stick the landing and it survived the experience, which made most people think that an orbital flight was just around the corner. Even a naysayer like myself, who felt that things were going to take a little bit longer, felt that a launch in 2021 was a near certainty. But now we have evidence to the contrary, because SpaceX has just told the FCC that Falcon 9 will be deploying version 2 of Starlink, at least for a while, until Starship is ready. Even though Elon told us a few months ago that that was impossible. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut and this is... Ever since SpaceX began a new campaign of static fires on Starship, people, including myself, have gotten pretty excited about an upcoming orbital launch. It has also been widely said that the first orbital launch of Starship is actually going to be taking up some Starlink V2 satellites. And there are very good reasons for this, and actually very good reasons that you don't want to use a Falcon 9 to launch these satellites. The most important factor is just how damn big these things are. The Gen 1 Starlink satellite is 2.8 meters long and 1.4 meters wide, whereas the Gen 2 satellite is 7 meters long and 3 meters wide. What this means, obviously, is you can't stack a bunch of the Gen 2 Starlink satellites inside a 4.6 meter Falcon 9 payload fairing. And yeah, I know officially the Falcon 9 has a 5.2 2 meter fairing, however, the usable space is only 4.6 meters. That means these things are going to have to be stacked vertically, not horizontally, the way we've been doing with the previous satellites. On top of that, these V2 satellites are very heavy. 1,250 kilograms 
per satellite, which means that the most that Falcon 9 could possibly haul to orbit is 18 satellites. And I'm here to tell you that even that is not very realistic because you're going to need a lot of additional equipment in order to deploy the satellites on top of the mass of the satellites themselves. I would say 15 or so is about the most that you could hope to deploy with a Falcon 9. Not only that, Elon has also made it clear that Falcon 9's capabilities as far as deploying satellites into a wide area in low Earth orbit is more limited than what the Starship Pez Dispenser is capable of doing. That being the case, it will take Falcon 9 months to get these satellites deployed and also to make them operational as opposed to only weeks with Starship. Lots and lots of reasons that you really don't want to use Falcon 9 to deploy these satellites. And perhaps one of the reasons that Elon said that it really can't be done. However, on August 19th, in a letter to the Federal Communications Commission, SpaceX announced that they would be using Falcon 9 to deploy Starlink V2 at least at first, and that they would have to customize and tailor the fairing in order to be able to accommodate these satellites. There can be only one reason that they've made this decision, because Starship is not going to be ready as rapidly as they were hoping, and also it's important to note that their current approval through the FAA only allows for five launches per year from Boca Chica. That means in order to be able to deploy a reasonable number of Starlink satellites, Starship is going to have to launch from both Cape Canaveral and Boca Chica, and clearly SpaceX is not really close to getting Starship up to that kind of launch cadence. As a matter of fact, I really don't think that a practical orbital launch is going to be possible until sometime next year. I've been saying that for quite some time, and I think this recent development proves it. Now, does that mean that there's a problem with Starship? No, absolutely not. I don't believe that there's ever been a real problem, quote unquote, with Starship. Instead, what's going on is it is simply taking longer to develop the most powerful rocket in human history than Elon Musk was announcing on Twitter. I think that there are probably lots of people inside SpaceX, including engineers and others, who have known for a very long time that this incredibly ambitious project was not going to be happening as rapidly as Elon's tweet might suggest. So what does that mean? Elon doesn't know what he's talking about? Well, I don't know about that. Instead, I think that it's important to keep in mind that Elon tweets lots of shit. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Although using Falcon 9 to launch Starlink V2 is clearly less than desirable, it's also clearly possible. And it's also clearly not a recipe for bankruptcy either. So once again, Elon, he's just kind of an eccentric fellow. He tends to say what happens to be in his mind at any given moment. And sometimes I think he regrets the things that he says. Even his recent political statements seem to have been rolling back some of what he said, stating, for example, that he believes that right-wing Democrats and left-wing Republicans are the ones that he trusts, not Republicans all the way on the right and Democrats all the way on the left, which contradicts a little bit of what he said before to where he would be exclusively supporting Republicans. I don't want to get into a political discussion right now. I just want to talk about what the guy tends to do. He tweets information that we should take with a little bit of a grain of salt. I think he does know what's going on at his company, but he doesn't know everything that's going on at his company. And some of his ambitions and some of his goals and lofty dreams are not necessarily realistic. And by the way, for those of you who are thinking, hey, let's use Falcon Heavy instead of Falcon 9, well, 
well, that's not going to work either because although Falcon Heavy can lift a lot more payload, the fairing size is exactly the same, which means the restrictions on such large satellites are also going to be the same. An extended fairing for Falcon Heavy may be coming out sometime soon. The military really wants one, but honestly, I don't think it's going to come out soon enough to make a real difference. But here's where the impact is going to be really significant. Not on Starlink, not on the future of SpaceX, but rather on the future of Artemis. Without Lunar Starship, Artemis 3 is dead. Artemis 3 is going nowhere. And if Starship makes its first orbital flight in 2023, that means we have two years to develop a human-rated Starship that's capable of being thoroughly and swiftly refueled in low Earth orbit and capable of landing on the lunar surface. Honestly, I don't think that that's even remotely possible. I think it's going to be a miracle if SpaceX can get Lunar Starship ready and operational by 2026. Consider the amount of time that it's taken to get Starship from where it was in 2019 to where it is now. It still hasn't made orbit. Once again, that's not criticizing SpaceX. They have made astonishing progress on an amazing rocket, but really to expect that it was going to be able to go from where it was in 2020 at the time of the SN15 launch to a full-fledged human-rated lunar lander by 2024, which by the way is how it was sold originally, was complete rubbish. That's something that NASA should have recognized from the beginning, and I think the only reason that they did go forward with it is because it was just so much cheaper than everybody else in Congress in their infinite wisdom didn't give NASA the amount of money that they needed to develop two lunar landers side by side. Once again, this is not a criticism of SpaceX or Lunar Starship. This is undoubtedly the future of interplanetary space travel and travel to the moon. Without Starship, Artemis will fail. Our long-term ambitions on the moon will fail. However, what we really needed was a small-scale lunar lander that could be more quickly developed than the most powerful, ambitious, and logistically sophisticated rocket in human history, which is what Starship actually is. So what does this mean for Artemis? Well, unfortunately, all the other lunar landers that are currently in development will not be ready until 2027 at the very earliest and possibly 2028, which means SpaceX needs to work at a fever pitch to try to be ready by 2026, a task that may well be impossible. NASA has painted themselves into a corner with this solution. Once again, this is the best solution for the long run, but I don't know if it's the best solution to get mankind to the moon as rapidly as possible. And so, with this in mind, I am going to make yet another crazy prediction that's probably going to spark all kinds of comments and probably trigger a hell of a lot of you as well. So if you hate SLS and love Starship, you might want to click off on this if you are easily triggered, but here we go. If Artemis 1 goes off without a hitch, if it is a completely successful test, I believe that Artemis 3 and the Orion that it carries, that is to say, the SLS and the Orion capsule necessary for Artemis 3 will be ready to go before Lunar Starship is ready to take astronauts to the surface of the moon. Once again, if Artemis 1 is thoroughly successful, I believe Artemis 3 will be ready to take astronauts to lunar orbit, and then, crazy as this may sound, SLS will be waiting on Starship to take astronauts to the surface of the moon. When I started this channel, that is the last damn thing that I ever expected to be saying. I never thought that SLS would be mature enough to put astronauts on the moon before Starship would be operational and and practical for human transport. 
stance board. However, I have changed my stance because of the amount of time it's taken to develop this incredibly ambitious project. And if indeed this does happen, it's going to put the future of our lunar ambitions in serious trouble. I hope to hell that I am wrong. Smash that notification button. It's very important to my channel. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Please check the description for various ways to support me because I am leaving for Cape Canaveral in four days and then I'll be heading to Europe shortly thereafter, bringing you guys some amazing content, much of which no YouTube channel has ever brought you before. And as always, stay angry about space.